Hello, everybody. It's time for us to fill this area with some stuff. There are three things that we want to put in this area. We're going to put off one of them for later. We're going to have a sub queue, very much like this queue, which allows you to see in detail which characters are going to do which things, but it only goes as far as your turn, so it lets you plan out your turn. Since we have these three characters in a row, we would have three elements to our sub queue, and as we filled out each character, the option of what they're going to do would pop up. I haven't decided exactly how that's going to look, but it's going to fill up the top portion of this screen. We're also going to have a battle menu for things like attack, use skill, item, run, that sort of stuff. That's going to fill up the bottom part of the screen, and that'll be like a classic you know, Final Fantasy VI style click on an option to have something happen menu. In the middle, there's extra space. So we're going to use that space to show a close-up of the character along with any sort of details that we might want to have. Uh, for example, if our characters ever have any complex states, such as poisoned or stunned, or one of their limbs might be damaged or something like that, we can put all that, uh, all that information right here. We are also able to show added uh, turn-based stats there. For example, if they're going third, uh, we can show that they have a boost to their attack and stuff like that because of the turn order. Uh, so the, we'll, have, we'll have a space here that's a specific size for our queue. We'll have a space here that's a specific size for our options. And then in the middle, we'll have an adaptively sized space that is, just fills out with whatever information we can fit into it. To block it out, we'll go into the battle menu and we'll just make it solid and interactable. And this is useful for us planning things out. Uh, since we use our animations to do all of this stuff, that does create a visual that's a little bit awkward right at the beginning, but we can live with that. We'll polish the visuals later. Uh, for now, let's just go ahead and put in the values that we'd like to put in. I'm going to move these buttons aside. Since they are just placeholder buttons, I'd rather they don't interfere with our mocking out of the elements. We'll add in a panel, and we'll change the color so we can see it real clearly. So we're going to lock it to the top like this. If you uh, control alt, con I've forgotten. There is a button to make it size itself more correctly, but I seem to not be able to make it work at the moment. That's fine. We'll do this manually. If you put your Y at one, that means it'll lock at the top. And then we can give it a height, say 160. And this will be our sub queue. We can duplicate that. And uh, I recommend hitting the correct keyboard keys. It's Control D, not Control F. And this will be our turn. So we'll lock that at the bottom there. Make the Y of zero. And uh, then we will say that this is locking to the bottom. There you see. And our height 160 is probably too small. Make it 220. That might even be too small. It really depends on what we end up wanting. Uh, we can adapt these arbitrarily as much as we would like later on. This will be our menu. And then between the two, we are going to have a third object, which is details. In practice, some of these are probably going to be children of some of the other ones, but for now this will work. So change the size so that we can see it. There we go. No. There we go. And that means that these three will adapt in height. See? So the two that have a fixed size will remain that fixed size, and then the one in the middle will have some kind of scaling images and stuff like that. This sort of layout is easy to build in Unity's new UI, and I recommend that you do as much as you'd like of it. Uh, having an adaptively sized element between several fixed elements works if you know roughly the screen size you're aiming for. Uh, if we were going to be doing this on a mobile system and we weren't sure whether it was going to be a phone or a tablet, we might have a little bit of trouble. But with a screen, we have a certain amount of leeway that we, we know that it's going to be roughly you know, in the category of 10,000 uh, pixels tall and stuff like that. So we can plan around that. Uh, still, you're going to have to understand what devices and what sort of resolutions you're going to be aiming for in order to design this kind of adaptable interface. With that in mind, let's go ahead and just uh, uh, fill in some of these 
details with some nice temporary measures. This sub queue, we'll put it here. We will remove this because this is just a dummy. And we will drop in some of these queue visuals on our dummy. Not the bird skeleton. As you can see, the dummy is definitely in the wrong spot, so we'll just go ahead and put it in the right spot. There we go. Uh, boop, boop, boom. There we go. Something like that. We'll have to we'll have to polish that as we go along, make it uh, make it a little bit more interesting later on, but that's fine. We know that that is the cue at this point. And uh, we want to fill this in with portraits and stuff, but we don't have anything even vaguely resembling a portrait. For now, just to make sure that we remember what the heck it's supposed to be, let's put in an image and just drop in one of our hero sprites. Nope, that didn't work. There we are. Nice scaling issues. Mm. Whatever, that'll do. And then down here we're going to have our menu, which is going to contain a bunch of menu options. Now, the menu has uh, a lot of potential ways to approach it. One way to do it is to slap down buttons, but in general, if you're doing a menu, you don't want to just slap in buttons. Instead, what you'd like to do is create a container that stacks the buttons up nice and proper, just like our queue stacks up these faces, but vertically. So to do that, we're going to go and add in another panel. And we are going to name it something. Now the reason I'm adding in a panel here is because it's, it's actually going to be a little bit padded out, like this. And rather than trying to figure out all of the details of how the layout's going to interact with the other layouts, I prefer to do a little bit of nesting so that it's easy to change later. Either way, we're going to add in a vertical element. And we're going to go ahead and add in some buttons. So these buttons are scaled by our vertical element, this thing here. And, uh, and that means that they are going to be sized arbitrarily, and that's really not what we'd like. So instead, we're just going to say, don't scale the height. You can scale the width, and we will in turn bring this down, but don't scale the height. But in order for us to have a height here in the button, we're going to have to add a layout element and give it a preferred height of, say, 40. That's too tall. 26. Going down into the button, let's change the text. I've never liked the fact that the default is a medium gray. I prefer the black. And uh, we will go and change this to, say, um, attack. Now we can duplicate this button as much as we would like, but you can see that it's not stacking properly. That's because we didn't duplicate the button, we duplicated the text. We can duplicate this button and you can see that it stacks automatically. I was like, oh, why isn't that working? So each of these buttons can have its own you know, text and its own name and all that stuff. The question is how we want to create this menu. Is it going to be the same for all of our characters? Is every character going to have a different menu with radically different options? Are we going to have a menu that's always the same, but then one of the buttons is different based on the character's basic design? Uh, I would prefer to have a menu that is very reliable, that you always know that the first option is attack, and the second option is skill, and the third option is item, and the fourth option is whatever. Those kinds of reliable menus allow the player to move through the game without having to actually feel the menu every time the menu comes up. The menu is a very boring, uh, uh, it's, it's not a very good game feel. Menus are inherently boring, static, flat. So the idea is that you want your menus to be so predictable that the player never even sees them. After the player learns which buttons mean which things, 
it's all just automatic to them and they use the menus but in their head all they think is attacking or defending they don't think I'm gonna click on the button which button is this button they just think of attack and their hands automatically click the button because I know exactly where everything is placed because of that we are going to use a static menu creation we're gonna use a specific layout that's always the same size always the same button order always the same options for every character in the game we may allow the character to override one of the specials that might be like a special button but by and large we're gonna have everyone have the exact same attack menu and that's gonna go for the enemies too underneath the hood the enemies can be commanded by this same menu so we're going to allow that to happen as well and to do that we're going to want to have a setup menu a menu that we can say this is how it's always going to work alright with that in mind what sort of options do we want to have in our menu well attack is obvious uh, this is pink but that's just because I wanted it to be visible we can change this to whatever color we would like now that we're actually working on it uh, how about a nice off eggshell blue sort of thing uh, whatever so we've got our attack and then we have uh, another option here which we can make um, skill and then here we might have item and then we might have uh, run is not an option I would like to have in this menu um, I think that run should be its own option separate from this uh, although it there is no place in the flow for a run command other than in this menu I'm thinking about it there's no like there's no pre-turn menu like in most games Final Fantasy say or something like that you might be able to get away with having a run option dragons dragons quest does this where at the beginning of each turn there is uh, you know do you want to fight or run and then if you if you select fight you go through each character there's nothing like that here so what we're gonna do is we're going to have to have a button here for doing all of those battle wide systems uh, that includes things like run but it also includes things like automatic repeat um, fight on a specific algorithm you know let the AI handle your fights uh, that sort of stuff so we're going to go and have this final option be um, party command so this is only four options attack skill item and party do you need any more options than that probably not we may need one more if we look at the standard uh, uh, I don't believe that it's included here yeah if we look at a standard menu so if I were to on the other screen here pull up Final Fantasy 6 battle menu yeah they have the same basic setup um, attack tools magic and item so same basic idea uh, they don't have the party command and instead they have a character specific uh, skill version so this should work we only really need these four options but if that's the case then these buttons are not set up correctly they need to be um, much more uh, uh, there's a lot of wasted space right so how do we want to deal with this there are some options these are all layout choices there's nothing there's no truly wrong way to do it but at the same time there are definitely ways to do it which are better or worse so if we were to uh, pull in this panel and make this an actual like window we can have this be really Final Fantasy style where we get a pop-up window that we uh, that we work with and I'm gonna change this from background to input field just to give it a lot of starkness uh, UI sprite later on we'll customize this but for now this works and you can see that it automatically reacts now I have it so that these don't get any taller the preferred height you don't exceed that preferred height uh, if we wanted to allow it to scale upwards we could just say force child expand uh, but either way it's largely irrelevant um, because we are going to pick a specific size and keep it in both that same size and that same place like maybe this so we're gonna hit save and we're gonna hit play and we're gonna open that menu up and you can see that these can already be clicked on 
Moreover, you can see that our arrows, I'm pressing the arrow keys, already uh, can switch which of these are selected, and we can hit enter to choose them. This is automatically included with a Unity's UI, but you have to be careful about menus that you don't want them to use. So for example, if we continue to hit down, we move over to these buttons over here, which is not ideal. So uh, in order for us to just select the menu, we're going to have to disable all of the other buttons or remove them from the tab order, whichever we would find easier. These buttons won't exist, so right now we're doing fine. These are the only four buttons we're going to have, and that will allow us to move through them. But what happens when we select something? If we select skill, we're going to pop up another object that is a list of all of the skills. And when we do that, we're going to have to turn this menu off so that when we press up, down, tab, uh, those all change the skill option in here rather than going over here and choosing a different option. Uh, you want to hit back or escape in order, to in order to move backwards. So I'm basically saying if skill pops up another menu, like say that this is a list of skills over here, so we, we, we click on skill and then this pops up. We want to automatically bring the cursor over and uh, allow up and down to choose a specific skill rather than having it like it is now where it just kind of moves between them arbitrarily. Actually, Unity's UI is pretty good about detecting... I didn't realize Unity had this good a... Um, a menu management. Look at this, okay? Up, 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 down, down, sorry. So that's up, this is down, 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 down. What's next for the down? That, because it's below, right? But if we were to use this as down, down, right, left, right, left, right, down, left, left. Wow, that's pretty nimble. Uh, that is nice. So hold on. I am changing my mind. I have found a new capability in the Unity engine. Uh, and this is rather nice. What I'm going to do is when you select skill and we pop up the new window, I'm going to transfer your focus over, but I'm not going to actually remove these options. Instead, you can just hit left to go back to these options and then hit enter to open up another side menu, a different side menu, at which point you'll be able to go back. So rather than only using up, down, select, and back, we will still allow you to use left and right as well as up and down. Uh, and that will prevent us from having to have a player hit escape or remember what the back button is because this isn't really a controller game. The idea of a back button, I mean, yeah, you hit B or whatever, but on a keyboard, there's no B. Um, well, I mean, there is one, but it doesn't mean back. So generally speaking, you want to try and avoid having too tight a mapping to the concept of select and back on a keyboard because it gives your game kind of a chintzy feel. It's much better to do it like this, where we can, in fact, just move back and forth by hitting the arrow keys in a very natural way. Yeah, I like that. I hope you understood that, and that's what I'm going to be doing in the next episode. Um, this has already been 20 minutes. This layout takes so long. You don't feel like it takes long when you're doing it, but then you look back and you're like, that was 20 minutes of me just fiddling with buttons? It happens. There's a lot of work to do in the menus of an RPG. We haven't even gotten started, really. But in the next episode, we're going to make it so that when you select these, we'll have menus that pop up.